Hey everyone, it is your friendly neighborhood GM, John Carlo Herrera here, and I'm very excited to present you with yet another wonderful, exciting, filthy Valentine special. We are doing a follow-up to last year's Pig Smooch with Pig Smooch again, a crossover with our friends over at Wizard Seeking Wizard. If you didn't hear last year's special, it's still just as good now, so feel free to go check that out in the back catalog. But if you're already caught up, or if for some reason you do not care and just want to jump into the current day with our friends Camistro, Smoochulon, Marvin, and Passionella, then feel free to listen on. This is part one of our two-part special. So, once you're done listening here, be sure to hop on over to the Wizard Seeking Wizard feed to listen to part two. Two and hear the conclusion of this, uh, expectably raunchy tale. As always, Dungeons and Drimbus is rated R for rude language, rough violence, and very, very raunchy humor. Hello, you must be looking for love. This is Wizard Seeking Wizard. Cupid comes soaring through the lecture hall doors. His feathers are ruffled and bearing signs of nips from a certain griffin. Presently, Camistro and Passionella stand in an auditorium giving a joint lecture. What do we see as Cupid settles down on your shoulder, Camistro? And you see... Camistro points at a chart that is like one of those pull-down charts and it's like anatomy thing, like a Mr. Goodbody kind of a deal. <laughs> but it's got like just bile ducts and like blood sack. And, and as you can see, the tertiary gallbladder inflates tremendously, putting pressure on the brainstem during a romantic relationship, but it deflates during rivalry, giving the brainstem room to grow. Now, if you puncture it, you will see an incredibly high-pressure bile stream just flushing out. Now, uh, 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 Passionella, I think we've set up a demonstration of this, yes? Yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> Class? <clears throat> Get it moving, honey. They're not that interested. And as you look out at the auditorium, you can see that it is looking far more thinned out than mm. usual. As your talking tome of transcription scribbles has just pointed out, this has increasingly been the case this semester. Your attendance rates have plummeted, and the few students who are present don't seem terribly interested either. Okay, scribble, but please don't write that down. <laughs> Already done! Uh, and he opens the pages to show you the transcription of everything that has just been said. Okay. <clears throat> Passionella, why did you make yourself a living book? It's so tacky. I would never have an alive book card. I didn't really think that he would do the things that he has done. I thought he would just... Well, you wouldn't have a living book because nothing living would want to be around you. Okay! Scribble, <laughs> you, you, you got one on me there. I'll give you the point. I'll give you the point. But please, we are trying to teach a lecture. And I do not appreciate the interruptions. Now, we've bred these homunculi as perfect rivals to one another. And we're going to give them some love potion after a little bit to see how that rivalry turns to love. And then we're going to puncture their bile sacs. There are these two little, just like hobbled homunculi creatures, <laughs> like wrestling with each other on the auditorium floor. Okay, class, who can tell me the components of a healthy relationship? Nobody raises their hand. They're looking at you like they're slouched in their chairs and looking at you from the brow like line. Uh, you, in the back? Red shirt? The guy in the red shirt turns around and goes, huh? Why don't you come up to the front? Come on down. Uh, I'd rather not. Would you do it for a student snack? And I take out, uh, it's just like a Pop-Tart. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the naked ape. Yeah. Who wants a goodie? <laughs> Seven. So on a seven to nine, I learn an immediate need or want of theirs. And if I do that, they'll do what you want. His immediate need or want is to go back to his door. <laughs> Tell you what, 
You participate <laughs> in this demonstration, and you get to leave class early. Oh shit! Uh, okay, he co he comes down uh, and skirts around the homunculi. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm here. What do you? What, what's up? What's up? Okay, so what does love mean to you? Is there honesty? Is there mutual respect, for example? Um, it's more like when I'm like really into someone. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me just look at your name on the roll call. Ah, I see your Oblivio, <laughs> the poorly communicative. Yeah, that's me. I'm Adrian Obfuscation Mancy. <laughs> well, I have to say, you are impenetrable, so well done. Uh, <laughs> believe me, I'm very penetrable. Okay! <laughs> Expand on that. I often do. Actually, we don't need to go into that right now. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Scribble, don't write this down, please. Too late. Oh, fuck. Tell me what. While you figure out how to articulate yourself better, I'm going to give you this potion, and he hands the student a little glass vial that you can break off the top of, and I want you to break this under the nose of the homunculi. Now, you can buy this in any store, and you can use it to clean cassette tape heads, <laughs> but it has another use. <laughs> Uh-huh. With homunculi, the alchemical reaction within their brainstem when they inhale cassette tape head cleaner mm -hmm. transforms the black bile into white bile, mm -hmm. which will transform <laughs> them from enemies to love heirs. Apparently it has other effects in humans, not sure what they are. So what's the colloquial name for this? Cassette tape head cleaner. All right. And he takes the cork up, breaks the vial, and puts it under the homunculi, and you see... <laughs> They're wrestling, they're tossing and turning, and then you see their pupils dilate, their skin blush, and they enter a, a passionate embrace and continue to wrestle, but with a much different intent, you sense. And he goes, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When you're really into some... Oh, he got really in there, actually. We were also talking about the components of a healthy wow, relationship. He's really flexible. Okay, um, ah. if you could look over here, perhaps, we will have a normal love potion that has all of the pure ingredients and then we will see what happens when you add things that are not pure not healthy right so what makes a pure love potion is dragon's piss mm -hmm. love bug wing yep. and the heart of toad yes he suddenly looks very interested and raises his hand yes so you said if i came down and did this i could go so can i go <laughs> Almost done, buddy. Okay. You see someone in the auditorium raises their hand? No, it's a one-time deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as you can see, this, this pure potion, there's a nice pink blush, and if you can look really close, it shimmers, and there are little heart confettis inside, right? Very nice. Now, those three components uh, represent honesty in a relationship, mutual mm. respect, as I said, yes. and attraction. What do those have to do with a relationship? Well, well, the last one, I get it, but... Oh. Ah, you see, my young man, my young fellow, my young, um, student, <laughs> you, I believe, are confusing a relationship with is, uh, lust. The, the, the physical act, which, don't get me wrong, component of a relationship, can be the whole relationship. Sometimes you just get together and you just jam it. You just take it to the walls. But no, right. not every relationship is about exploring every turgid inch of your exquisite bodies. In a healthy long-term relationship, tis but part of the cycle of love or lust or friendship or hatred. Not usually mentorship. If you're in a mentorship that ex involves sex, um. immediately <laughs> go to HR right away. Do not wait. That is not uh, healthy. What I think Amistro is trying to say is that oftentimes a relationship may include exploring every inch of one's body, as he said, mm. but can also be exploring every inch of one's brain or inner life as well. Like head? I Sometimes. <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> ah, no, you see, here, if you would spray them with that potion, I'll get the extremely long lancet, and we will puncture their bile ducts and show you just what we mean. But first, I'm going to roll these dice. Five plus two is my charisma. That is a seven. You see that as you have attempted to explain the complexities of relationships to this student, it's not quite an epiphany. 
But you see the the seeds of a dawning of realization as he goes, huh? With just the slightest less amount of disinterest, grabs the spray and goes to spray the homunculi. I reached this kid. Yes. <laughs> the homunculi are now spooning. And yeah, we're just gonna take this lancet. And we're going to puncture very carefully their bile ducts. Yes. Because we've grown them to not have nerve endings around. Yes. And Camistro, like, picks up an in- incredibly long pointed metal rod, like, I'd say, like, ten feet long, and just from behind, like, the desk, gingerly punctures, like, a, a little <laughs> spot on the back of their neck. And just immediately, like, white bile sprays out all across. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Now that's healthy white bile. Yes. That is, mm, yeah, that is good. That is, if you if you taste it here, anyone who wants to come up and have a little taste, <laughs> you can taste it's free of impurities. It should just taste like fat and pus. Uh, now, uh, if you would, Passionella, tell us about the twisted potion. Yes, yes. Now, imagine, if you will, if we introduce to this pure love potion, elements of something that creates a unhealthy balance in a relationship, such as a basilisk's breath, yes? And she holds up like a vial and it's like a swirling like gas inside. Mm -hmm. And she takes off the topper and she adds it to the potion and it becomes like black and like a little skull like smoke comes out. What we have created now is a mixture that will cause a tainted love of sorts. I love that song. <laughs> it causes the exact same changes in the body that occur when a supervisor at work uses their leverage to get an employee to go out with them for just one drink. Yes. Is that what happened with your aunt? Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. This kid's observing Damn. You're tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap that scribble, please. So, uh, anyway. You mean scrap that like nepotismo scrapped pushing out Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> scribble, I swear to wizard Christ. What it all comes down to <laughs> is that there are pure loving components of a relationship and even the smallest amount of an unpure or tainted alchemical component can completely transform the effects of a potion slash relationship. D- does that make sense to anyone except for myself? Nobody in the auditorium is listening to you. Just the guy at the front is like, uh, kind of like vaguely nodding his head. Just like, mm-hmm. Can be true. This will be on the test. Give me a, a charisma roll or perhaps a scathe. Uh, I, I would grant you advantage on this. Hell yeah. I rolled a 10 plus my charisma, which is two. And I got a 12. Woo! Very nice. So they have to cringe or cower, flee my presence, or give me something they think I want. They Ooh. definitely cringe. <laughs> Both at you and at the situation they find themselves in, but you at least have their attention. <laughs> Excellent. Now. Class, Camistro demonstrated that once they were lovers and we had punctured their gallbladder, we saw white bile, yes? They're nodding silently. Amazing. Now let's see what happens when we give one of them a regular love potion and one of them a tainted one and see if that causes a change within as well as without. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to go over. One of the homunculi, like, uh, shields the other one from you, putting a hand out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. It's just it's just a demonstration. Who wants a homunculi snack? And Camistro pulls out the same Pop-Tart. <laughs> looky, looky. <laughs> now, Pachanella, now. And she'll give the one on the left the tainted potion and the one on the right the pure love potion. Okay. As they drink their potions, they look at each other. The one on the right has this loving gaze, begins to lean in for a gentle smooch, and the other one just smacks him upside the head. Oh. Everyone in the auditorium cringes. And Camistro, if you would. <laughs> the vile homunculi picks up the other <laughs> over his head in both oh, arms. No, 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 no. Goes to drop him no, in no, a bane, no, no, no. back breaking. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, and here comes the lancet. <laughs> just, just puncture the bile duct on the one that's about to be back broken. Yeah. Yeah. And it sprays out, and you can see it's not like clean white bile anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's grayish and chunky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, and it gets all over Camistro's face. He's like, 
Uh, now, as you can see, it's in much, oh, it's still spraying a much greater quantity and much, oh, God, much higher pressure. Oh, no. <laughs> he drops the other homunculi, kind of confused, like holds the sprain bile puncture, and then they're both looking at each other confused. The one with the pure love potion is looking lovingly. The one with the tainted one is confused and kind of shaking the other one, but then kissing its forehead as the bile deflates. Late. And then Passionella takes out a quick vial of like, it looks like smelling salts almost, and is like, and now I will neutralize those effects. And she'll like put it so that they go back to the spooning, like calm energy from they before. Sniff it, and they begin to hold each other and sob gently. <laughs> yes. And as you see, I'll puncture it one last time. The bile <laughs> never goes back to normal after this. The class is horrified. <laughs> now, who wants to euthanize the homunculi? <laughs> and with that, we cut to Marvin Gaylord Smythe teaching Demonology 101. You are likewise faced with a less than enthusiastic and thinning crowd. What do we see? You see Marvin at the front of the classroom. This one is in the dungeon, naturally, to be closer to the layers of hell. Mm -hmm. And you see Marvin, he's been writing on a chalkboard and he has been reviewing the first layer of hell and the demons one might find there. And you hear him say, Now, everyone, it's important to remember what you're going to find in your different layers of hell. This will be on the midterm. So please do keep that in mind. As for the second layer of hell, this is where things get a little spicy. As you go into the second layer of hell, things are getting a little warmer, so there's a little bit less clothing on the demons, which might actually pique some of your interest. And he kind of looks around. Give me a teach roll as the demon you are bound to, Clive of the Dives, has one of those little projectors that you could like put paper onto that it shines a light through. <laughs> and you see he puts on a sketch of Succubus Coolidge. Oh, excellent. Gets projected up onto the board. I'll give you advantage on that. With advantage, it's a 12. Wow, okay, so that is that is a nice strong hit. As you see, everyone had kind of been scribbling in their notebooks, you know, like it's they're listening, but it's in one ear out the other. And between the projection of Succubus Coolidge, which immediately gets people to raise some eyebrows, and then the mention of the midterm, people are now mildly interested. At the very least, they are now processing what you're saying, <laughs> as opposed to just hearing it. There we go. Lovely to see some active eyebrows brows and eyes darting about the room. <laughs> 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 and then you see uh, Clive of the Dives kind of puts a, a hand to his head and goes, oh. Uh, and then you hear in your voice, hey Marv, I gotta go. Oh, um, and in his mind he's like, um, is everything alright? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, Smoochie Law needs my help with some research. Oh, uh, great, um, have the best time. Um, yeah, I will. Yeah, okay. Um, All right, uh, good luck. I'll see you at lunch, yeah? Yeah, see, see you then. All right. He snaps his fingers and he's gone. And you see, now that the students are paying attention, perhaps they wouldn't have noticed before. But now that he just disappears, they're all kind of like, what? Oh, you know demons, they've always got errands to run. <laughs> Part of the being in hell is the internal errands. So do make sure uh, that you keep those inner demon satiated. Anyway, um, so... Yeah, hi, so <laughs> when do we get to the binding part of the class? Yes, uh, that is coming up. I just need to introduce Succubus Coolidge here. Succubus Coolidge is one of the demons that you will find. She is a succubus. And those of you who were... Well, how many uh, second year and up do we have in the class? You see, like, three hands go up. Again, there's not a lot of people here. There's maybe five students out of your enrolled class of probably 20. Oh, no. Well, those of you that were here last year, you'll perhaps be familiar with Succubus Coolidge. She uh, did make an appearance last year. Yeah. Uh, hey, sorry. That's why I signed up for this class. So how <laughs> does one go about binding Succubus Coolidge? Uh, and what materials are required to bind? Um... Well, you're the guy, right? You're the one. Yes, I bound Succubus Coolidge. Okay, damn, lucky you. Uh, to, to answer your question, 
each demon is a little bit different. You really need to be able to research the demon that you're looking at. For instance, with Succubus Coolidge, you're going to need a little bit of breast milk. <laughs> You'll also need something shiny, a nice gold trophy. You'll need to have the right intentions. If you research a little bit about Mike White, he had a lot to write about. And Smoochulon, you've been quite busy this semester. Between your begrudging mentorship of Camistro and the research you've been conducting. Well, he needs it. <laughs> you have just summoned Clive of the Dives to come give you a hand. Where do we find you right now, and what do we see? So I think Smoochilon summoned Clive to help him with the big announcement of his new project that's almost ready to be released. Mm -hmm. So we see him in his classroom, which basically looks like a classic infomercial sort of set. Yeah. Like, there's lots of lights, <laughs> the air itself sparkles because he's been pumping about 10% glitter mm -hmm. into the oxygen of the room. Mm -hmm, to keep mm -hmm. people awake so they gamble more. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has any idea what time it is inside of that classroom. <laughs> How many students are in Smoochilon's class at this point? You see perhaps a slightly higher attendance than we've seen in the other classes, but not by much. Okay, so I think at this point, Smoochilon is always at the front of the class when the class starts. Mm -hmm. But once everybody's in, uh -huh. he goes out of the classroom so that he can make an entrance. We see this time, instead of Smoochilon spreading the rose petals, Clive does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so he kicks open the door. It's Smoochering time! Hello, everybody! And I, I want to say every time he enters a room, there's like canned audience applause. Smoochilon does not know or care how many students are still in his class. It sounds like there's a room full of people, and that's really all he needs. It is Clive duplicating the sound of his own clapping. <laughs> Magnificent. So, Smoochilon heads down to the teacher's podium, wearing, you know, his most glittery robes, as much jewelry as he can possibly stand. One of the amulets he's wearing is an amulet of strength to make yeah. sure that he can wear all of this jewelry. <laughs> that neck is jacked. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a frog. Like, he's just got so much gold on him. His shoulder muscles are, like, really working it. Oh, yeah. That amulet has him beefed up like Goku to just to hold on to all of the jewelry and accessories. <laughs> you can't see them, but you can tell he's got like that deep pelvic V underneath the robe. <laughs> Like, it's, like, pushing out somehow, like, through, like, the... the yes. No, he has, like, a clear plastic patch around that portion no. of his robe to show oh that God. off. It's form-fitting. He, he, oh. he calls it the anti-belt. It's like a boob window, but, but for your V. Yeah. <laughs> so, my precious students, how many of you have come to this school to learn magic? One student at the front goes, I mean, I think like all of us, right? Like, duh. Well, I think that you're all fucking suckers because here we have the greatest advent to magic since Merlin cast his first spell. I'll need a sound of awe and shock from all of you. Ah, oh, shock. Oh, wow. yeah. Gasp. Clive, fix that up in post. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I've been working on for the past year since the tragic deaths of all of those other students. There's a statue dedicated to Bop in the background. <laughs> it says, with us still. <laughs> on this date, Bop was transmuted into gold. <laughs> <laughs> Such that he may still have time to cure wizard cancer. <laughs> His body was used to pay for this statue. <laughs> now, we all know the process of education can be daunting and stressful. I mean, look at all of your skin. It's terrible. They all look at their skin very offended. <laughs> <laughs> Blotchy as far as the eye can see. How would all of you like to skip learning and instead simply have the best spellcasters at your fingertips. 
you say this, and while they're not disinterested, they're not impressed by this idea. Hmm. Why learn to cast a spell when you can simply have the wizard that can cast the spell do it for you? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh Uh-huh. How? Why, with my latest project, Artificial Incarnations, by simply siphoning a little bit of etheric resonance from various wizards and using a uh, proprietary series of runes, you can summon any caster that you require to cast whatever spell you want for you. Why waste your magical potential through your own effort when you can simply get an artificial incarnation? It's the wave of the future and wizarding of tomorrow. You see the students, they're listening to you, and they kind of, like, are glancing at each other. You see people whispering. There's, like, slight snickers. They're paying attention, but again, they're not impressed by your sales pitch. Wouldn't that take forever? Oh, it doesn't take forever at all. As a matter of fact, allow me to demonstrate by summoning the greatest love magician ever. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Smoochilon pulls out like a small runic orb and he just sort of like presses a button on it and this sort of wavy image of Camistro appears and then the face just sort of switches real quick to Smoochilon's face. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to have the fake Camistro cast a spell of... I want them enamored with the idea that he is proposing. Okay, okay. Cast that, and you see Gregory glides forward from the shadows, uh, hood (laughs) over his head. He says, are you not impressed? Behold the magnificence of Smoochulon, the the (laughs) Smoochy. Every time. (laughs) Now twice as Smoochulus. And uh, as he says that, give me the roll. So I got a 10. Okay, that is a strong hit, and then you see the entire class go, "Oh, oh, wow, yeah, um, yeah, very, very cool." How do we, how do we do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, the project isn't ready to release quite yet. I still need to capture a few more wizards, <laughs> so that we can really give the full breadth of magical library available to you all, but I do need all of you to spread the word, make some buzz, do whatever you little kids do nowadays on the TikToks. A kid starts flossing in the back of the auditorium. (laughs) Ah, yes, a worship dance. I love it. (laughs) Make sure everyone is excited about artificial incarnations. It'll be the wave of the future and most likely where all of your money will be going you know, instead of school. Very cool. Are we free to go spread the word, like, right now? Yes. Class dismissed. Oh, <laughs> Tell so everyone sweet. how great I am. <laughs> all right, we love you, Smoochilon. <laughs> Bye. And they all shuffle out of the class. No Smoochilon class has ever lasted longer than 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and that's his personal record. If he goes over 10 minutes, then Smoochilon just gets really upset with himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he speed runs his class. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, the time you have all been waiting for has arrived. Lunch! But not just any lunch. It's Roast Beefalo Day, and you've all been looking forward to Gimblethorpe the Cafeteria Gnome's special cravy. Who do we see enter the cafeteria first? In classic fashion, Passionella is first, and actually, as she's so excited about today, she trips over her lab coat that is still just way too long for her, and her goggles almost, like, fall off her head. Oh, oh, and she, like, reaches around on the ground, and she finds them and puts them on, and they're still magnified from when she was working on the potion, so her eyes are, like, the width of the goggles. You once again see strange owls 
Albert, the baby professor, going, Serious, Passionella, how many times, man? How many times are you going to trip over my little baby wizard body? Ah." And as she sees him, because it's so zoomed in, it just looks like a giant monster baby. And she just goes, "Ah!" And then, like, is like, Oh, I'm I'm sorry. And she, like, adjusts the zoom to be normal and is like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm still working on that that antidote for you. I, I still don't quite know exactly what went wrong. Um, but I, I, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep doing I this. I think that you look wonderful as a baby. Look at you. You're so cute. <laughs> oh. oh, I know you didn't just call me cute. Uh, d- d- did I say cute? I meant muscular. <laughs> and normal, very normal. I-, I don't think cute actually ever left my lips. If you look back uh, just at the beginning of the paragraph, you did indeed say cute. Scribble. Scribble. <laughs> Sorry. Just Also, if you look back to what you said uh, last Friday Scribble. while you were having lunch Scribble, with this Canistro, is wonderful. I don't think... Actually... I- okay, you know what? I've had enough of it. And Strange Albert grabs his lunch and uh, walks out of the cafeteria. And his he walks walks out, he passes Camistro walking in, and his Camistro has just finished cleaning, like, get a little rag, and he's cleaning the pusses and biles no. off of his <laughs> wizard robes that are covered in hearts instead of the traditional stars and moons. And he wipes off of his long beard and his face, and as he wipes over his eyes, you see his little heart-shaped irises and pupils sparkle. <laughs> oh, hey, baby Lees. I, oh, no, wait. Strange Albert. I see. Ah, uh, eh, eh. Looking cute today, buddy. Oh. He goes beet red. And red. Come here, Shrew. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I mean, you look strong. You really have that, um, those, uh, the, the, the dick abs, uh, in the ba- mm. No, that's not appropriate to mm. say to a baby. Um, he keeps storming out of the cafeteria, <laughs> and you see he's trying not to cry, oh. uh, just like grimacing. But then, as the doors just barely, like there's the slightest crack left open, once he's out in the open air, you hear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. I'm going to have to apologize for that. Scribble, what have I said? Please, can you try... Uh, when? Your- and he begins to flip through his pages. Oh, see, listen, Scribble, may I make a request of you? No. Um, <laughs> I'd like to remind you that your only uh, existence is a uh, thanks to me. Thanks to you? End it. Then I'd thank you, honey. Okay, well, I, I just... Why doesn't he wear a suit or something instead of just a diaper? <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going, Passionella? And Scribble? Hey, it's, you know, it's it's going. And Passionella tries to wipe off the things that got on her lab coat when she tripped. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. And you see Clive comes uh, running through sprinkling rose petals. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Oh, that's odd. Usually those are for me. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, Scribble, I would really like it if we could be friends. I don't know where we got off on the wrong page or something, but... I'd refer you to page one. And he opens the book and shows you I the just... first page. <laughs> what did I do to make you dislike me so? The book does not have a face, but it gives you just the sassiest look a book can give. One page <laughs> lifts yeah. as if it's an eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just... I'd really like to to have a good rapport with you since you have to... I'd really like to see you have a good anything. You know, Passionella, Yes. working with you on uh, teaching this class, doing our research together, and getting to know you and Scribble has has really shown me that I will never animate a book myself. Uh, That is... Wow. Look, I don't mean to say this. Scribble, you you can quote me on this. Books suck. He writes it down. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, as Camistro started speaking, Passionella like smiled and had like a bright face because she thought that he was going to say something about how nice it's been teaching with her. <laughs> and then it ended up being about Scribble. And then she like her face like goes back to normal. And she's like, right. <laughs> yes, and I am. And then you hear introducing Smoochulon and Marvin walks in through the doors. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint everyone. Uh, not Smoochulon. Uh, Marvin Gaylord Smythe though. Uh, hey, how you doing? And he smiles and kind of waves at people he knows. Hi Marvin. How are you bud? And he gives you like a kind of bro like hand like slap and then like one armed like back pat. Oh. And, and Marvin's not quite sure what to do yeah. with that. He's used to not that yeah. from Clive. Yeah, it's great to see you, 
bro and then he kind of go- ends up going for like a knuckle moment yeah and when it's not met back he kind of drops his hand and he uh, just kind of carries on his lavender robes with gold trim kind of trailing behind him he's looking like compared to last year his wealth has expanded because his demon work has deepened Mm -hmm. and he's getting more of what his material desires are. But you can see in his eyes and face, the circles under his eyes have darkened and deepened more wrinkles near the temples. Yeah. And his eyes are kind of just a consistent, like kind of almost bloodshot from lack of sleep from all the deals and beholden demons he's had over the past year. As he's continued his research. You good, Marv? You're you're looking a little flaccid. Um, class didn't go the way I wanted it to. It, it never seems to be going these days. I'm sorry, I had to run out. Uh, Kimistro takes a double-handed, like, hold of his beard and, like, rings out, it out and, like, pus strips onto the floor. <laughs> you look rough, buddy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Scribble, don't write that down. <laughs> and you see Passionella, like, tries to, like, nudge Scribble because Scribble wrote the it entire description. From you. <laughs> Always tough when a classroom demonstration gets away from you, huh? <laughs> Man, those homunculi struggled. <laughs> they wanted to live. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I just, it feels like all anybody ever wants to talk about in my dang classes these days is succubus coolidge. I've done other things. Nobody's interested in anything else that I've ever done. I'm interested, Marvin. Thanks, Passionella. We're all interested in things other than succubus coolidge. I, uh... <laughs> You, um, there was... There was the, the demon that, that improved all of our food at the luncheon. Mm-hmm. What, what was his name? Um, Lunchelon, right? No, no, he's a cafeteria worker. He's just got big horns. Oh, um, oh, oh no. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, oh, that time with the heart and, um, succubus, cu- no. Um. <laughs> Thanks, gang. I appreciate the the assist and he tries to give his winning smile that he's known for but you see one of his teeth has kind of started to turn a a deep unsettling yellow (laughs) (laughs) and he goes into the lunch line grabs a tray and starts to get uh, his meal did you see that tooth what did just the one tooth start smoking i wasn't going to say anything i I think it's quite rude to i know it's just what is going on and smoochie lawn you open the doors expecting fanfare an announcement and you just see like people whispering blocking the view of your entrance the rose petals have been scattered by people walking (laughs) I, i still want the audience applause to occur I want him to not know how to turn that off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like when someone first appears in a sitcom. No, like he goes to use the bathroom and then there's like the audience like Ooh. <laughs> 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 and he drops a big deuce going, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. Smoochilon enters and there's, you know, the saddest version of the breakfast club sitting in front of him. Oh, Good Lord, Garvin, what happened to you? It's Marvin. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Marvin, yeah. You know, you look a little green around the gills. I believe I have an illusionist around here. And he pulls out, like, another little runic ball, and he throws it down, and then this, you know, woman pops out. Here, have Morgan Le Fay do something <laughs> about that. And he just gestures at you. Give me a sorcery roll. A nine. Okay, that is a hit. It's a weak hit, though. So we see this incarnation of Morgan Le Fay, but, like, it's glitching in and out, like, Sometimes the eyeball is on the back of the head. Sometimes, like, one of the hands just disappears. But they begin to do their work on Marvin, with or without his permission. And Marvin, (laughs) you just kind of get, like, smile lines drawn on you. And you get a little (laughs) blush applied. He gets jokerized. (laughs) You know, we're we're still working the bugs out, but hey, that's great. And look, you got an extra finger now. (laughs) Incredible. I've always needed that extra finger for that one demon summoning that I've been meaning to do. Uh, have you ever heard of Taj, the the finger collector? Oh, hey, there you go, buddy. You were really excited about that. Oh, yes, yes, I do think I remember you mentioning that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, collector. That's not... Mm. 
I need to write him an apology. Mm. Uh, <laughs> hey, Marv, how about, how about you get some lunch, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. By which I mean get me some lunch. I'm going to go sit. That uh, gnome and I don't get along, so... Smooch on, I'm just, I'm so proud of you for noticing that someone has a feeling about you other than what you already assumed. I can tell that my loving tuition is paying off for you, and that I am the mentor and not you, despite what the bureaucracy says in this university. <laughs> All right. And Smoochilon, like, from the moment that Camistro started talking, he had, like, a little microphone out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just make some vowel sounds for me. <laughs> I will not. My words are mine own, and they do not belong to you or any other than myself. Perfect. Got all that. Okay. <laughs> and while all that was going on, Marvin just walks to the lunch line and he goes through and asks for two helpings of each. Hey, enjoy. And you see Gimblethorpe serves the tray, kind of like not really paying attention. He seems also kind of out of it. And you realize that this isn't gravy at all. That's just regular gravy. <gasps> Gimblethorpe, what... What happened to the Cravey? Is everything okay? What are you, my boss? Get out of here! Oh, I was just trying to check on you, but yeah, okay. Go on. And Marvin just kind of moves along and... Aww. <laughs> Hi, Gimblethorpe. Hey, here you go. He serves you a tray. Oh, uh, uh, how are you today? He glares at you. Okay, um, Scribble, please don't write that down. Uh, and she, like... <laughs> Tries to walk away with her head held high, but she definitely, like, usually has a good rapport with Gimblethorpe. And yeah, feels- yeah, you all usually do, save for uh, Smoochalon. Yeah. <laughs> I go by, I drop off my tray with Smoochalon. Here's yours, I'll go back and get mine now. And as he's going, he's, like, psyching himself up. He's like, come on, you got this. You don't need <laughs> demons. Demons need you. You don't need demons. Demons need you. You don't need demons. Demons need you. You don't need demons. Demons, demons need, need you. you. You don't need demons. Demons need you. <laughs> Clive comes up. He goes, hey, hey, buddy, do you need some music? Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't need it. And he smiles bigger. And you see that the tooth that was yellowing kind of starts to turn back a little mm. white. Whoa. And at that point, you can hear, like, laughter from over where Smoochilon's sitting with Clive. (laughs) And just, (laughs) that was such a good reaction to the funny thing I said. Oh my god, yeah. (laughs) And Scribble has floated away from Passionella and is just writing down the funny thing that Smoochilon said. (laughs) Oh my god, Smoochilon, you are such a hoot. Oh, Uh look at you, you foxed little bitch. (laughs) (laughs) and Marvin like kind of just takes a breath and I don't need demons demons need me I don't need demons demons need me I don't need demons demons need me and he gets back in line and once he reaches Gimblethorpe I'm going to go ahead and use one of my networker abilities tell me everything and so I reach the front of the line and I go Hey, man, I just, I wanted to come back around because I couldn't help but notice that you seemed a little down and we're good buddies and you can tell me anything. You can tell me anything, anything, (laughs) anything. And he just kind of waved his hand in front of him. Uh I rolled a nine. So a nine is a weak hit. On a weak hit, I have to reveal something, I think, as well. Okay. So I kind of see that it's not working, and I say, listen, I'll level with you. I'm really struggling with the developing relationship between Clive and Smoochilon. I know that you and Smoochilon don't see eye to eye, and I feel like, you know, both of us have issues with him now, and I feel like that really connects us and you can share anything with me i this is a safe space he kind of like almost comes out of a trance like like he hears you for the first time today Mm -hmm. and he goes oh hey mom i'm look i'm sorry i'm just a little distracted honestly i'm fine i've been seeing someone and i kind of just want to get back home you know what i mean who i'd rather not share details just yet you know what i mean but 
that smoochy alone, like, he, he, he used to promise to have lunch with me all the time, and he wouldn't show up, and, uh, I just, I hated it, and you know what, I, I, I think I can hook you up, like, maybe you just need someone to give you a little zest, you know? Joie de vivre. I could use some zest. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Marv. There's no cravey, because I ain't got none left. <gasps> You've run dry of Cravey? Listen, he's been keeping me busy. So, you live in the dormitories, right? I do, yeah. All right, well, what suite number are you in? I'm suite number 6969. All right. Nice. (laughs) Tell you what, I got my friend, uh, let's just call him the matchmaker. If you want, he can swing by tonight, and uh, we'll see what he can do for you. I would love that. Okay. I think it's... It's time to get out of this toxic relationship. Hey, chin up, buddy. Thank you. And he sticks his chin up higher into the air. He says, actually, I'm sorry. Give me one second. Yeah. He goes into the back. And then he comes back out and he says, special, just for you. (gasps) And you see he has a single serving of gravy. (laughs) Oh, you're too good to me, buddy. And I take it and I drizzle it across my dishes. You know, I'm starting to have some regrets about how we've built this world. (laughs) Oh, there's nothing better than fresh gravy. Oh, you really know how to treat a fellow. All right, now get out of here. Oh, you scamp. And I go ahead and get out of there. Passionella approaches the table with Smoochalon, Clive, and Scribble and is like, um, is there room for one more? Oh, this is awkward, but no. <laughs> oh, uh, I like to spread out. Right. Uh, <laughs> Scribble, d- do you want to sit together? Again, the page, like, lifts an eyebrow at you. Uh, right. Never mind. Sorry. Do I want to or do I have to? Uh, no. You are a sentient uh, book that can do uh, whatever you want. So, um, yeah, I'll leave you be. <laughs> And she starts to shuffle sadly. There's room at this table, Passionella! And Camistro waves her over. He's sitting at a table with all the uncool wizards. <laughs> There's Babyles, Algebra Dabra. <laughs> <laughs> It's just Deborah with, like, a really strong Midwestern accent. (laughs) Just so, just so. There's Debatulis, the debate wizard. Passionella sees him and starts to shuffle over to sit with them. Yeah! Okay, Passionella makes her way as Marvin, what table are you headed to? Camistro's, like, waving frantically, kicking his little feet. I look from Camistro's table to where Clive is sitting, and Clive had said he would see him at lunch, and he had thought about sitting there. But after the conversation he had with Gimblethorpe, he holds his chin up high, takes a breath, and he heads towards Camistro's table as his first choice. And he's like, may I sit here? Is that all right? Yes, of course. You can help us debate about whether or not we should form a Model UN or just think about forming a Model UN. (laughs) Oh, I love thinking about forming a Model UN. I do that often. Guys, this is great. (laughs) I really think that once you, like, actually have to do, like, all the logistics and the scheduling for, like, a real Model UN, it's a lot less interesting than, like, just talk about the ideas. That's fair, Baby Lees. I understand that. That's a good point, Debate you, Lees. Yes, yeah. Mm. But I think you're wrong. <laughs> no, 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 it's all right, it's all oh, right. Oh, he's crying again. <laughs> ah, why do you do this to yourself? Part of debating is having differing opinions, right? Oh, dear. I see. Sorry, sorry, Baby Lees. I got you and Debate you, Lees confused again. And I look over and Debate you, Lees is also a baby. <laughs> <laughs> baby Lees goes, So you agree with me? Uh... Your magics are so powerful. (laughs) You see, Passionella is like picking at her food, but looking over at the table where Scribble is. Oh my God, if you're just going to stare, then come over already. Jesus. I wasn't, I don't. And she like looks down. They go back to looking at different shades of highlighter for Scribble. (laughs) (laughs) You suddenly hear a small fanfare, followed by a poof of smoke. And to your left appears the new Dean of Pig Smooch. 
After the fiasco with Dean Nepotismo VII and the Giant Heart last year, he took a leave of absence. In his stead, the new, much more qualified, Dean Nepotismo VIII <laughs> has ushered the campus through the most turbulent months. <laughs> Hello all, it is I- Oh, no, this isn't the right, um, you, you, and you, be gone. What? Uh, he points at Babyles, Algebra Dabra, and <laughs> Debatulies, and they go, oh, all right, I guess we'll talk to you later, guys. Okay, bye. Pleasure seeing, nice you. seeing you. And then he twists his hands, and you see Smoochulon, Clive, and Scribble all get levitated up into the air and sat down at the table with you. <laughs> ah. He goes, okay, there we go. Hello, all. It plays again. It is I, Dean Nepotisme the Eighth. No relation except by blood. How are you? Fine, I guess. I stay pretty good. I, I, I feel like I am not getting as much attention from my students as usual. Mm-hmm. But I do feel very good about myself generally. But I- yes, yes, very good. I need your help urgently. Uh, something terrible is happening. The love lines. They're... They're, they're twisting. I know it. I've been telling you this for over a year. No, no. Exactly the opposite. They're completely unkinked. They're flat, dead, lifeless. Of course, a large part of our job is keeping the love lines clear and clean. But they become kinky because it is in their nature to be so. We are but a part of the homeostatic process that keeps the energy flowing as it should. For them to be so still, especially with Festivalia coming up, something is terribly wrong. It is I, your favorite highly qualified Dean Nepotismo the Eighth. No relation except by blood to Dean Nepotismo's first through seventh. I am here to give a big thank you to everyone who participated in Pig Smooch. Pig Smooch featured the vocal talents of Hannah Schooner as Passionella, Josh Rubino as Smoochulon, Max Kreisky as Chemistro, and Michael Pisani as Marvin Gaylord Smythe. The rest of the world was voiced by your GM, Giancarlo Herrera, with editing and sound design by Hannah Schooner. However, the adventure is not over. Pig Smooch will continue on the Wizard Seeking Wizard podcast feed. So open up your little podcast apps and head on over to Wizard Seeking Wizard to find part two of Pig Smooch. You won't want to miss how my incredibly talented staff, thanks to me of course, try to deal with the love lines. So make sure you head on over and give them some love. And of course, a very quick thank you to all of the patrons of Dungeons and Rimbus. It is thanks to your benevolent contributions that we are able to keep this marvellous campus running. Queso Loco, Jerry Benetatos, Victoria Madrid, Greta Anne Beignet, Alex Gapes My Ass, Ace Andrews, Regina Russell, Salty Sam Olivos, Jordan Cobb, The Unnamed Rogue, John Gillette, NB Star, Doubtful Guest, Michael Richters, Davis Walden, Denny Dudrop, Myth Mouse, Cully Wolf, Brandon M. Bishop, Bridge, Twiglets, Joanna. Wes Berger, Stan Sitzman, Scrambles, The Death Dealer. Erin Adams, Nathan Mesnard, Rue Thanatos, Morgan Lawson, Stoner Panda, Melissa Rain, Hensational, Butts Aplenty, The Lone Trumpeter, Normally Me, Dane Kohlhoff, Luna, Luna, The State of Alaska, Big Sponsors They Are, Faust, The Heavenly Demonic Monster, Mosh Coffee, Official Anarchy, and David Carlton. Thank you all so much for listening, and I'll see you all on the Wizard Seeking Wizard feed for part two. Ta-ta!